Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, or whenever you happen to be listening to this. Welcome to the final episode of the year, or if you're listening to this into the future, just another episode of the Film Realist Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Aranya. This is the film and TV podcast from a complete nobody that's hopefully for somebody. On today's episode, I will be reviewing Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, the first of Two films that were purchased by Netflix to be produced exclusively there with maybe an occasional one-week theatrical release. That way it's eligible for things like the Academy Awards, which I don't know if they're necessarily important to Ryan Johnson, but being eligible for them is certainly something cool given how positive the response was from critics and audience to the first film, Knives Out. This film did have a limited theatrical run, as I mentioned already, which I did see about a month ago now. So if I'm a little foggy on the details, I haven't had the opportunity yet to rewatch it. I am recording this a little bit early. So if new, if movie news explodes over the next couple days, it'll unfortunately have to wait until January. If you have not listened yet to my Avatar Way of Water episode... This is the final episode of the year, and I will be taking a two-week break in January and coming back on January 16th. So, a lot could happen in that time. Who knows? January typically is a slower month for content. There are also a couple of films that I do want to see that have released in the year of 2022 that I'm hoping would be in my top 10 of the year. And given how I haven't seen them yet, I did not want to compile a list with just, oh, I haven't seen it, sorry, I don't know. I want to see a couple films before I finalize my list for that. So I've been working on that slightly over the last couple weeks, but I I want to see specifically things like The Fableman, Fableman's Babylon is an example. There are a couple other things that I haven't seen as well. So as I mentioned, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery will be the review. There will be a non-spoiler section. I'm going to be honest before I've even recorded it. I don't know how dense it is going to be given that this is a murder mystery. And even if you're interested in this film in general, Ryan Johnson, the writer and director, has said, don't watch the trailers. We have to market it somehow and some things may or may not slip in there that could be potential spoilers. So I'm going to talk about the film very broadly and then get into a spoiler segment. If you do not want to be spoiled, as always, time codes will be listed in the description. Let's get into Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery is written and directed by Ryan Johnson, who also wrote and directed the first film. This film stars Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc from the first film, the everyone's favorite Southern Private Eye, where he is a guest at a murder mystery party, and unfortunately a real murder happens and chaos ensues. I don't really think I can say anything else that would not be considered a spoiler. I thought this film was absolutely spectacular. It certainly has a different plot structure than the first film, which I really appreciated. It's abundantly clear that Ryan Johnson has a very well-established grasp on the murder mystery genre. That this plays off of a significant amount of different tropes than the first film. Knives Out. There are going to be minor spoilers coming up ahead of time. Obviously, you know exactly what the resulting murder was and what the culprit was in the very beginning of the film. And then you follow the rest of the cast and the two leads, Anna de Armas being the other, as sort of trying to get out of this problem that that she believes she had caused. So that's automatically a different whodunit, where with Glass Onion, it is a more traditional whodunit with the structure but at the same time, it's certainly a Ryan Johnson movie with flash forwards and flashbacks throughout the story to expand on what was happening. This is not going to be a new thing. I know a lot of people have posted their reviews to when the film had its limited theatrical release on November 23rd, which was around uh, American Thanksgiving, if you're not currently living in the United States of America. But so there are things that may not be original, but I actively avoided anybody other than anyone else's review because I don't want somebody else's opinion affecting my own. So I don't know. I outside of tweets here and there, I don't necessarily know how everybody else feels, but if you're listening to this, thank you very much. I'm giving you my opinion on how I felt about the film. 
One of the most entertaining parts about this film is its cast. The interactions between everybody are certainly entertaining, playing a wide spectrum of different people. Edward Norton, Janelle Monet, I believe, is the standout of the film. She gives a very three-dimensional performance, and there's significant amount of depth to the characters that she plays. Catherine Hahn is Catherine Hawning all over the place, but it's still wildly entertaining. She plays a very different character than things we've seen from her before, I think, while also still doing what Catherine Hahn is known for. Leslie Odom Jr. is certainly very talented. He was more most recently in one night one night in Miami obviously he played Aaron Burr in Hamilton Kate Hudson Dave Batista who continually is doing very different things in terms of the roles that he is choosing to pick outside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe he has been a consistent actor in Denis Villeneuve's more recent films with Blade Runner 2049 Dune part one and part two as well as Jessica Henwick, who plays all sorts of things, and Madeline Klein, who I was not overly familiar with, but she also plays a very interesting character. The relationships between these characters really build... Now, I don't think this is a pun, but I'm just going to say it anyways, a web of interactions and how the relationships affect potentially who may be the culprit for the murder, which I really, really enjoyed. Every piece of of information and detail about each character is meticulously presented in a way that as the onion unfolds, as you see the layers, as we know, ogres are like onions and a well-written murder mystery or movie mystery also requires several layers for it to be fascinating in more than one viewing. I think this film will do very well with streaming given the fact that you can rewind or scroll back and see exactly what specific details you may have missed is going to be really entertaining for the streaming audience. At the same time, I thoroughly enjoyed watching this in the big screen. It is a very cinematic film shot entirely differently than the first film, which was something I really did appreciate. I These films feeling like that they are the same in terms of cinematography could be something that feels repetitive, but it is not done at all. Given the fact that this is taking place in the Mediterranean as opposed to the New England area, we really get a different color scape. Uh, I know there's been a lot of praise about the clothing, particularly in what Benoit Blanc wears in this. There's a shocking amount of very, very funny cameos that almost have nothing to do with the story, but they just add a level of detail to the world as a whole without saying too much or giving too much away this film everything presented is important to the story which i really appreciate that level of detail and care ryan johnson has had some criticisms in the past particularly with the last jedi it hasn't been officially on this show yet but i loved the last jedi obviously if you want to be overly critical of it, you can. And I have some, I believe to be valid criticisms of that film, but I really did enjoy what he did with Star Wars. And his talent as a screenwriter is abundantly clear with everything else that he's worked on with Brick, Looper, obviously Knives Out, now with Glass Onion and The Last Jedi previously, that these two films are certainly excellent companion pieces, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does with the next film, which doesn't have an official release date yet. We do know that it is coming. Ryan Johnson said he is preparing to work on the film, so that means the script's going to be written, and then hopefully in two years, And but I know that Daniel Craig has said he will continue to these, do these films as long as Ryan Johnson asks him to, which is incredible given the fact that Daniel was in another film franchise for quite a long time, but... This franchise, I don't think, puts him in as nearly a heavy physical toll as the Bond films. I don't, if you're not aware, Daniel Craig had several injuries while filming those films. I don't know what more I can say that would be a spoiler, so I do not want to give anything away. This is a wildly entertaining film. It's smart, it's funny, it's a good mystery. It plays with your expectations of the genre, which is something Ryan Johnson, I think, is very well is very skilled at doing 
Check it out on Netflix if you didn't get a chance to see it in theaters. I highly recommend you check it out. It's a great family watch, and I think, as I said already, it's going to be very entertaining in multiple rewatches, which may be why it's in my top 10 of the year. That's just a little tease for a future upcoming episode. So, I really enjoyed the film. I can't really tell you anything else about it because I don't want to spoil it for you. So, if that did sound entertaining, go and watch it for yourself. I would recommend it. But if you want to hear more about it as to who was the murderer, how was the murder done, what are these interesting relationships that you are talking about, I will tell you in spoilers. Spoilers for Knives Out, Mystery, Glass Onion. That's completely reversed. Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Off the bat, this film starts in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is certainly interesting given the fact that I would say that most people feel that it's over. There are obviously still people who are contracting COVID, but things, at least in Canada, have mostly resumed normalcy. But it's an interesting place to put this film, and it automatically helps introduce how these characters are reacting to what is happening around them. We see that Benoit Blanc is playing Among Us with some very famous celebrities. Honestly, I don't want to spoil those parts because some of those spoilers are or cameos are quite funny, and I don't want to... Those things I'm going to leave out of spoilers. You may say, Kyle, come on, tell us who they are. Those parts were really fun, and I'm glad that I didn't know about those parts moving forward. But Benoit Blanc is invited to this island where we meet Miles Braun, who is a Steve Jobs, Elon Musk-type billionaire, and he invites all of his friends Catherine Hahn, who plays Claire DeBella, who is running for governor, or sorry, is governor of Connecticut, but she's running for Senate. Leslie Odom Jr. plays Lionel Toussaint, who is the head scientist for Alpha, I believe is the name of the company. Yep. Um, for for Edward Norton's character. And Janelle Monet actually plays two characters. She plays Cassandra or Andy Brand, who helped found Edward Norton's company but eventually left given the fact that she believed that things he was going to continually in research and develop were going to be dangerous, like significantly for people's safety is uh, in the film, as well as playing her twin sister, which I will talk about later on. Kate Hudson plays Birdie J, who is a former supermodel turned almost influencer. And then Dave Batista plays Duke Cody, who is a treat Twitch streamer and a men's rights activist. And Jessica Henwick plays Kate Hudson's assistant and Madeline Klein, who plays Whiskey Duke's girlfriend. So they are all friends with Miles Braun and they are invited to the island to do a Miles or a murder mystery party with Edward Norton's character, which turns out he wrote the entire mystery for the film or he did not. He hired Gillian Flynn. So if you don't know who Gillian Flynn is, she was the author and screenwriter for Gone Girl, as well as... My brain is mush right now. What else did Gillian Flynn write? Gillian Flynn wrote, I'm killing time. Sharp Objects. That was the one off the top of my head. I couldn't remember. Which did have an adaptation, which had Amy Adams in it. But regardless, which I found quite funny, if you are a fan of murder mysteries, you likely would have read or seen Gone Girl starring Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike. So the real big twist of this film, now that we're in it, is that while we initially are shown Benoit Blanc, who kind of seems out of sorts for about the first third of the movie, which is interesting given the fact that he was supposed to have been invited to this island. It turns out he wasn't. That Janelle Monae's first character we're introduced to was actually killed because she was going to essentially tear down Miles Braun's reputation and potentially take back control of the company from him with a specific piece of evidence from their past. And it turns out that Helen, the twin sister who was not involved at all, hires Benoit Blanc to find out who killed her sister. And we learn throughout the film that each of them potentially could have a reason for killing Miles Braun. And while you're thinking, oh, he's got to be the person who was killed on the island, it turns out no... The person killed on the island is Dave Batista's character because there is 
essentially no satellite service in the or cell service in this place and the fact that miles braun doesn't have a phone it the discovery of andy the janelle monet's character who was it's very complicated was involved with miles braun's company alpha was killed he is the one killed by miles braun now this has been pointed out i think in multiple reviews and it's something that I found really interesting is that Miles Braun is an idiot and the fact that he is playing a Elon Musk type especially is even more culturally relevant than I think even Ryan Johnson was aware of beforehand. These archetypes of these big tech CEOs not being the brightest is certainly happening in front of our eyes if you are following Twitter, which is really interesting and Makes this film even more timely, but getting to see how different characters were also reacting to what was going on in the pandemic certainly helps establish like who they are as people. We see that Kate Hudson's characters just has a gaggle of friends hanging out in a party prior to her being invited to this. The fact, one of my favorite elements of the film is that the murder mystery written by Gillian Flynn is almost immediately solved by Benoit Blanc at the dinner before the party had even really started, which was really funny. The relationship that Benoit Blanc develops with Helen, the second character we are introduced by Janelle Monet, was certainly interesting to have him team up with another person. That may be the most similar part to the first film in that Anna de Armas' character was almost his sidekick and that Helen and Benoit are working together to try to uncover the the murderer of of Andy. This is more confusing than the first film in in several ways in that the first act of the film kind of just shows what's going on and we're believed that Andy is killed on the island but it turns out she had not been killed and then slowly we get to see that pieces of the film that were established are giving details that we don't know are important. For an example being that Dave Batista is fairly certain he saw my Edward Norton's character leaving Andy's house or subdivision around the time that they had all been sent an email that Andy had a piece of evidence that was going to absolutely destroy Miles. So the fact that there are multiple murders at play adds a level of depth to this that I found really, really entertaining. And there's a specific point in the film, which is incredible for for a specific detail if you are paying attention for it. I know that my friend who had I'd, who I saw the film with had seen it and I wasn't sure, but the fact that the film presents it in a way that actually makes you double guess yourself or second guess yourself is incredible. And I think that goes down to how the film was shot and how the writing was done on a script level for these level of intricate details in that it is presented that Miles, Edward Norton's character, accidentally gives his drink to Dave Batista's character and kills him, which contains pineapple juice which dave patista's character is anaphylactically allergic but given the fact that we don't know that initially miles makes it seem as if some or edward norton makes it seem as if somebody was targeting him and all of this is put together because he's trying to save himself from having to reveal the fact that he killed janelle janelle monet's first character and so it's Essentially, this whole film is Miles has almost built a Jenga tower and pieces of it are being pulled out as the film goes on. The standout of this film is Janelle Monae. Her performance as two different characters is so distinct. And the fact that you can see when she is pretending, when Helen is pretending to be Andy and when Andy is just Andy was absolutely phenomenal. I really hope we get to see her in other things. This is more in the realm of indie, even though it did cost $40 million, but maybe she'll jump aboard a big blockbuster. I have not looked to see what her upcoming projects were, but I thought she was absolutely fantastic. It is slight, I guess it would be considered a reveal that Daniel Craig's character, Benoit Blanc, is gay, and we do get to meet his partner in the film. Again, I don't want to spoil those, that level of detail, but talking about the murder mystery element plots of this are kind of important for the review as a whole we do get some sort of pseudoscience with a future power source which was ultimately the result that was the cataclysmic element part of the relationship between 
Edward Norton and Janelle Monet's character, Andy, the co-founder of their company, Alpha. And as a result, we see why this relationship fell apart. Glass Onion is actually the bar where all of these, pe- these people met, all the friends minus Benoit Blanc's character, of course, because he is the odd man out in terms of the friend group invited to this event. There was a literal glass onion, which was hilarious and shows the level of depth that Miles Braun is able to think about. It's a stupid person pretending to be smart, which is really funny. And there are elements of that that are hinted at throughout the character's dialogue that once pointed out are so obvious, but the fact that they just seem like small mistakes. But when you start to see the list of stupid things this guy has done and said pile up, the picture becomes clear, which is incredible. I really look look forward to watching this film again. I know I mentioned that in the non-spoiler section of the review, but I think watching it through in the theater, I immediately left like, I cannot wait to watch that again. This is... I. Again, I'm saying this, it's repetition. This will do really well on streaming. I thoroughly enjoyed watching this film and the level of detail is on a higher level than I think even Knives Out was where every little intricate plot detail piece of dialogue adds up to the overall solution of the film it does get a little bit grander in terms of spectacle but it by no means goes bigger and bigger bigger is just better. I think having more money, having the Netflix budget being shot during a pandemic allowed for such an incredible cast like this to be assembled. And I really look forward to seeing what the next adventure with Benoit Blanc is and who Ryan Johnson is able to recruit for that. I'll watch as many of these as they're willing to make. Let me know on Twitter what you thought about the film. You can tweet at me, Kyle underscore Naranya, or you can tweet at film realists. For your opinion, don't forget e- Realis has two E's. That will do it for the spoiler section of A Knives Glass Onion. I almost did it again. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. I, If you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you're not, if you're celebrating something else, Happy Holidays. I hope you have a great rest of 2022, and I will see you in 2023.